Hello YouTubers and welcome to my channel. I'm Enduro Bandit and today I'm going to be taking a look at my 2017 Yamaha YZ250X two-stroke. Uh, I've had this bike for quite a while. I bought it in 2018, brand new. So it was last year's stock, got a good deal. That's how you get good deals on dirt bikes. Um, at the time, I mean, this bike was, you know, really competing head to head with the European bikes for enduro and all that and and you know it was my preference over those because it's it is a better built bike it's honestly more fun and you know it even though it wasn't even then it wasn't as good at the really technical stuff you know like for instance like log hopping or like really gnarly uh rocky areas and stuff like that you know that's not the kind of riding that i'm really into anyway you know the price point was right and i didn't want to spend so much money on a new ktm i also like the look of the bike more i like that you can hit decent jumps with it and it, it can do it can do motocross and enduro it can do both pretty well and it's got a nice power band hit it's a really fun bike but if you compare it with the modern uh, European enduro bikes, the Gas Gas, Husk, Barna, KTM, you know, they've got the 300s, they've got tons of options, they've come a long way, and I'm really Im impressed with those bikes. Uh, it seems like they're just trying to shove as much technology as they can into them. They've got the fuel injection and all that. This bike's still carbureted, which has a different feel. Some people prefer carbureted over fuel injected. My other bike is a fuel injected Kawasaki KLX 300R. I bought it last year it's a 2022 i'm really happy with that bike too but totally different personality as you can see i've completely updated the look of this bike i've got new plastics from artec they're basically like oem i wanted as close to oem for plastics as i could uh, but there's lots of options for plastics artec's one of the most expensive options but I've got our Cross GFX graphics kit. Really happy with it. They added on the X for me. Uh, good customer service. I've got my name on here. You can add numbers, um, but I decided to go without numbers this time. So I'm gonna be going through this whole bike, uh, talking about all the components, what I upgraded, what I like, what I don't like, um, how this bike compares, and, and here we go. We've got the Pro Taper Pillow Top hand grips. These are always one of the very first things I do on any bike because I just can't handle the stock hand grips. They they cause my knuckles, my hands, fingers to cramp up really bad. Um, Enduro Engineering Evo 2 hand guards. Uh, the other hand guards, one of them, uh, the bolts stripped on it because they weren't designed for these kind of bars. Um, and I had modified them to fit eventually, you know, one of them stripped out, but these are designed for, for these bars, uh, cause they've got the, you know, tapered to like a fatter bar in the middle. So less chance of bending. I like that. Um, I like these basic style, uh, hand guards too. I wouldn't go with the ones that are just, you know, not a full wrap around because if the bike, if the hand guard comes down on you with that piece of metal it's gonna really hurt you know plus you can still damage your throttle and your handlebars and stuff if those come down hard on a rock or whatever the end of it is gonna be banged up pretty bad so i don't understand why people buy those things i mean i can understand you're using it if it came brand new on the bike which a lot of the european uh, enduros just come with those stock because they don't want to give you a full wrap around they're too cheap with that one of the few things they chintz out on so i've also got motion pro fork bleeders it's kind of a luxury but that's one of the first things i did on the bike as well kyb full suspension you know it doesn't get any better than that a lot of the european brand bikes they've got suspension that's some people would consider to be on par but 
you know you might have to put more money into it to get it feeling the way you want from factory these ones uh, I'm you know I only weigh 150 pounds I don't have to even stiffen up my my springs or anything for my weight bike feels amazing I just set the rider sag the static sag and way I went um, you can set this bike for you know doing serious motocross you can set it up for enduro that's something that you can't really do with a lot of the European bikes but this is a really good all-around bike um, if you want to hit the track and then you want to hit the mountain you know the next day then this bike is capable of that doing that well too um really good brakes really happy with the brakes really smooth predictable um they're not going to catch and send you over the handlebars which i have had happen in the past uh, on another bike and i've heard of other even name brand bikes doing that but the bike that it happened to me with was a Chinese bike. I mean, it's kind of expected. It was a hair trigger brake and things happen. So, but yeah, really good performance brakes. Um, I've got an eBay pipe guard on here. Nothing crazy, but it does help with protection a bit. My pipe's taken, you know, a bit of a ding here, uh, a little bit of a ding there. I don't want to get super hard um, pipe guards because I heard then that all the force goes in here up against the frame and you know that's even worse um, I've got unibiker radiator guards uh, put those on new as well if you can afford it just put just put the money in early and you're gonna save yourself money if your bike goes down hard you know so my radiator radiators haven't taken any serious damage um, well, literally no damage from spills, and it's gone down hard a few times. Also, another thing I did right away was the Emperor Racing skid plate. Emperor Racing is my go-to for skid plates. They make, you know, really high-end stuff. It looks cool. They've got a cool scorp scorpion on there. Um, so happy with that. It's got a hole for draining oil out, which all skid plates should have. Um, and i'll go over to this side we're slowly working our way down i'll talk about the gas tank a little bit here um i believe it's a 2.1 gallon it'll go between 2.4 to 3 hours on a full tank depending how hard you're riding and what kind of riding you're doing um but usually for me and i'm you know on a comparable level with with most intermediate riders intermediate to you know, uh, advanced intermediate level riding, I am hitting the reserve at 2.4 hours and it's got about half an hour of gas left on the reserve tank after. That's something that the YZ250 doesn't have is a reserve on the petcock. They also don't have a kickstand. Those are two things that you gotta have if you like enduro, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've got a MSR hour meter, put that on before I even rode the bike. You gotta have those. Um, still relatively low hours, uh, especially for how long I've had it because I've been splitting the ride time between two bikes the whole time and, uh, it helps keep the hours down. Um, also I just really like switching. If you can afford to have a second bike, um, it's, it's really fun to switch it up. Um, so yeah, uh, I think the gas tank's just the right size. I don't need to be out riding longer than you know two and a half three hours um not including breaks and if i do want to go longer you know you just make a trip back to the truck and top it up with gas have a have a lunch or whatever um so this engine is basically the yz250 engine but with some changes with some really nice changes it's got lower compression don't mistake that for lower power so this really helps with your lugging ability um it gives you more linear power still a nice power hit for sure which you gotta have with a yz um but so yeah it's got that top end power it's got lugging ability not crazy lugging ability but it'll do the job for sure you just gotta work the clutch a bit sometimes it's a five speed um first second gear they left the same as the yz250 um first gear is way too tall honestly for 
for single track, but you can, I mean, obviously you can do it, but you're gonna be idling the bike around everywhere. And I did that um, the first, you know, couple months of riding the bike before upgrading to a from a 50 to a 51 to a rear sprocket because i just wanted a little bit tighter gearing and that's all the bike really needed um to put it a little bit more on the power band um second gear is my favorite gear for sure it's a tall gear but the bike's super punchy so it pulls through the gear really nice you know it's this you can even lift the wheel and fourth gear on this thing without even touching the clutch if, if you hammer it um, but third gear is really short, so it's got kind of funky gearing. First gear too tall, second gear is nice, a little tall, some people would say. And then third gear, too short, especially when you put on a bigger rear sprocket. Then you get into fourth and fifth gear, they are super tall, they're for forest service roads basically. And I really enjoy the high speed factor, because I'm a speed freak. So this bike stock will take you to 144 kilometers an hour. That's that stock spec rating, which is really fast, faster than most all bikes that I know of, you know, in this category. And so mine might be a little bit below that since I cut my top speed down a little bit, but I didn't want to lose too much of it. Downhill, I can probably still hit 150 though, if I'm screaming it. Uh, one complaint I have though is that it likes to catch neutral. It's it's really hard to to skip from second to first, especially when you're in a hurry. When you're going up those hills, you have to do like two individual taps to get it down. Sometimes you know you don't have time for that because you're just losing all your momentum. You gotta just try and you know work the heck out of your clutch to try and get it up the hill in second gear. Second, third gear, really usable on the fast flowy stuff. First gear, you can even hit some hill climbs with because it's quite tall. So you can even, you know, if you're keeping it right on the top of the power, you can make it up that really gnarly stuff with first gear. A lot of these uh, Yamaha guys love the tall first gear, actually. They'll just take a YZ250 and, you know, smoke some KTMs with it if they're a good rider. Um, but I have raced YZ250s with this bike. And I'll tell you guys how it compares. I did a couple of straight line races. The YZ250s will hang with it till I get into the third gear. And then, you know, I'm already, I'm nosing ahead. And then fourth gear, you know, I'm putting bus lengths on them because they've already ran out of gearing. Um, and if with a KTM 300 XC, it's pretty much the same thing. They run out of gearing and you put bus lengths on them. And this bike isn't slower off the line either. You know, it, it's, Head to head, if they are as good of a rider as you, then they're able to go head to head. Otherwise, you know, I'm I'm dusting them right off the bat. Um, but you, you put it up against a 300 XCW, now you have a race. Now that is a real head to head race. That's more up to the rider than the bike on who's going to win because they're very even bikes. The XCW has a sixth gear. Top speed is about the same. Moving our way to the back of the bike. Um, we've got the poly sport swing arm guards. Those are new. I've never had swing arm guards before, but, um, I want to see how it goes. I want to see if it protects my swing arms from getting gashed up by the rocks, which happened a little bit over the past six years of riding. We've got a nice disc brake guard down here. They come with that stock. This is stock too. I think the YZ250 even comes with that. Um, I'm really happy with the stock pipe they come with. Uh, I think Yamaha did a really good job with that. Um, the muffler stock, I like it, but it doesn't come with a spark arrestor. So I wanted to upgrade to an FMF Turbine Core 2. They're supposed to help with your low-end power and it still sounds good. You know, a lot of people switch to these. They're probably the number one go-to. Talk a little bit more about the suspension on this thing. Um, I've hit got like, you know, two meters there with this bike many times. That's about the max that I can do with the suspension settings I've got. Um, cause I have it set a little bit more for enduro than jumps, but I do like my jumps once in a while. So yeah, it can handle some really nice jumps. That's two meters of air to flat. So it was handling some serious air time. Um, can't complain with KYB. You know, you're getting good suspension when you're getting KYB. My Kawasaki KLX 300R, it also has KYB, but it's not, you know, the top of the line stuff. It's not quite fully adjustable. It doesn't have quite as much suspension travel, 
Um, so this suspension is a little smoother and more capable. Um, I've got the Electron Carb upgrade. That's one of my favorite upgrades on this bike because I don't like fiddling with jetting. I don't like, you know, t constantly tweaking. Not that I was. I was really ha happy with the stock carburetor, which is better than most stock carburetors. Eventually, I got tired of it not running at, you know, 100% depending on the humidity, elevation, heat. Like, there's so many factors that come into play. And I knew that it wasn't quite at 100% most of the time so but with this one i can feel the difference it's a big difference the bike sounds like it's running right all the time literally all i had to do was set the idle you don't need to get the billet one that's you're just going to spend more money on on it if you do that this isn't the billet carb from electron it's their you know ba their basic model and they'll set it the way that you want it basically you just tell them what kind of fuel and mixture like oil and all that that you're using and i'm i've always ran 32 to 1 airbox lets in tons of air on this bike um we've got two big slots on the sides no snorkel in there uh there's a little slot at the bottom of the airbox as well back here um so if you're following someone that's kicking up dust you're gonna have a quite dirty air filter after that ride um, on the rainy days, you know, st it stays nice and clean, but you're going to be uh, cleaning your air filter and re-oiling it more often than with most bikes, especially, you know, the enduro, the bikes that are made specifically for enduro, they, uh, the air filters don't get dirty quite as fast on them. Let's talk about the seat. Um, very stiff, as most modern dirt bikes are for seats. Um, you're not supposed to be sitting on the seat much. I can't really complain when I compare with, you know, other modern bikes. Um, it does its job. It's tough. It's not going to tear. Um, the seat height's quite tall. Um, taller than my KLX 300R by a little bit. Taller than most full-size bikes by a little bit. I'll just cover the tires, and I think we've pretty much covered everything at this point. Um, they're really nice Dunlop Geomax AT81s. Uh, a 110 118 the yz has a 19 in the rear um, but 18s are better for enduro for sure um, really good traction with these tires i actually tried to switch back to my go-to after i ran out my first set of these or my first rear tire i should say i'm still on the first stock front tire but it needs to be changed soon because some of these are tearing but this is gonna be my, my last season with that front tire for sure but um, yeah, I actually switched back to these because I missed the performance. I missed the traction. Um, and they're pretty durable too. So can't complain there. They come with those stocks. So that's awesome. They're better than the, the other, uh, I've got Dunlop Geo Max on my Kawasaki Kalex 300R, but they're not the AT80ones. They're like MX 52s or something. Um, and those are not as good performance either. But they're, they're good. They're not as good as these, though. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that covers my video pretty good, my overview of the bike. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment below, um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, I'm As far as oil goes, I've been using Lucas Racing because it's the cheapest, but I've never had a problem with it. I've been mixing it 32 to 1, like I said. Yeah, just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's, you know, worse. Because I used to use one of the ones that's the most expensive now, the Maxima Super M. And, you know, I'm not noticing any difference in performance from that, really. Um, but they are, there are some differences with the oil, for sure. So, um, you can look into that if you're thinking of changing brands. Um, but, yeah, I, I always just use 91 pump gas and bikes had no issues with that so yeah thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos with the yz250x